<laughs> the introduction is like, woo! I think that's how Elon Musk feels after every uh, space launch. <laughs> he just comes on TV and he's like, you guys thought I was a normal dude. I make jokes. Twitter. <laughs> Well, anyways, thank you all for coming out. It's a freezing cold night, holy shit. But the good news is, I'm so nervous that that jacket belonged to me a few seconds ago. It's off. I feel like I could power the city of Vegas just with my nervousness. It's so warm right now. I look at the fire, I was like, maybe turn that off. I don't need it. But no, seriously, thank you all for coming and thank you all for uh, you know supporting us. You know, us artists wouldn't have anything without you guys. So give yourselves a and uh, yes, agree. And uh, the other bit about like my dad, just wanted to touch on that real quick. Um, I'm a pretty lazy guy, pretty introverted guy too. So my dad's also introverted, but he's not lazy at all. Like for fun, he builds pyramids. <laughs> he can just take like whatever this wood right here. He'll take this wood, and by tomorrow he'll be like, Baba, look at the pyramid of Giza. <laughs> I built it. I'm lazy. And from an early age, I was like, I can't do that shit. So I cracked a few jokes and he goes, <laughs> I was like, oh, I love how that feels. I want to do that more. And that's actually true. Like I learned how to be funny just to give that guy a joke. That's a true story. Like I, I've always wanted to give back because like, how do you compete with building pyramids? What the fuck am I gonna do if I'm a lazy guy with Mr. Pyramid over here? And like even from an early age, I remember I'd go to India and visit like all my relatives and shit and they're always comparing you to him. This dude has accomplished literally everything on all scales and fronts. CEO of this, CTO of that, CFO, a lot of C's. <laughs> a lot of C's. The only ones I got were on my report cards. <laughs> dude, this guy, my God. So I'm sitting there, I'm like 12. Before I even really know what most things are, I'm sitting there being compared to Mr. C-level dude, right? I'm sitting there and, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm just waiting. I'm like, okay, um, I'm in Assam. That's where we're from. We're from Northeast India. It's called Assam. My wife's from there too. Woo, Assam! <laughs> Assam is awesome. Um, so anyway, I'm sitting there. We're eating or something. I can't really remember what the exact scene was. We're sitting there and like, this is our first trip to this city in Assam called Tinsukia. It's like in the northern part of Assam. We're sitting there and this is a weird thing in Assamese culture, but your relatives will review you like you're some kind of score. It's really weird. So we're sitting in a line, all the cousins, and they're all getting rated. And I'm up next and I'm nervous like I am now. I'm nervous, I'm a nervous guy. I'm sitting there like, oh shit, what are they gonna say? She literally walks up to me and goes, this is Druba, son? He's uglier than Druba. <laughs> I was 12! Like, that's half the reason I'm on stage right now. At least half. I don't even know. It could be more. Jesus Christ. So that, and, so the funny thing is, my sister does a great job of making fun of this shit. She's so funny. My sister's fucking hilarious. So she talks about like how it's like, because you know, we're always being compared to my dad and how incredible he is. By the way, everyone give my dad a round of applause for flying out here for this. Thanks, Dad. Thanks for being here. Only a guy as loving and as cool as Pyramid Guy would do it. Thank you, Pyramid Guy. Anyway, so my sister makes really good fun. So she goes like, so this is her impression of what most people are like when they meet us and find out that he's our dad. So she, she's like, oh, look at me. I'm Druba. I did everything. Whoa, I have the best skills in the world. I'm a C-level person. I build pyramids. Woo! And like, <laughs> Whenever she does that impression in front of like the whatever people that you know do all the complimenting, they're always like, she has not been raised right. <laughs> and in my head I'm thinking, I don't know. She's out to keep it real, you know what I'm saying? Like, sure, he's amazing. But everybody is amazing in their own right. Everybody has something beautiful and unique and it, like by definition, each person here is this embodiment of an energy that keeps the universe flowing. No single energy is the same, and no single person is the same. So just by definition, you're amazing by existing. So now that we're on church at church, no, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> no, but seriously though, like I want people to remember, this material world can get too real, too scary, too insane sometimes. But the reality is, this is not the end, this is just the beginning, right? We are these energies, we're here to experience this version of whatever this is. If you keep being good, not like Donald Trump, if you keep being good, <laughs> you might become a star one day. That's a pretty sweet gig. Versus, I'm guessing Donald Trump, like this is using Hinduism and a little bit of science, like energy is neither created nor destroyed, but changed from one form to another, and reincarnation. And reincarnation is talking about the energy. I know a lot of people are like, oh my god, last lifetime I was a general. <laughs> Bro, we don't know <laughs> if your body was exactly the same. That's probably not going to happen. The energy, sure. I I'm sure the energy could have embodied a general fine, whatever. But this face right here, tonight's feature is probably not going to repeat. <laughs> this is the last time. But the energy source will probably come back and do something. So back to the, the, the example of Donald Trump. Based on science and based on you know like Hinduism, that dude is probably going to come back as a lower life form. And I don't mean they're lower life form judging them. Yes, agree. I, I would also enjoy laughing at him. <laughs> be like the star and be like, Man, I came back as a cockroach. <laughs> That's all I want to do all the time. Wait, that wasn't too different when I was president. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> no, but some of that stuff is pretty crazy. Like when you start bridging all the different teachings and stuff. Most religions are like, don't be a douchebag. That's basically the crux of it. It's not like, um, they'll never come out and be like, push people out of their homes. Thanks, Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> I'm revving a lot on that guy. Anyone else want someone to be revved on that we hate as a group? Anyone who's a total douchebag to the general public? Elon Musk? Elon Musk? Okay, sure, we can go back in time. <laughs> Sure, well, let's talk about Elon Musk. I mean, I don't know him to the same degree that, uh, I guess everybody knows about Donald Trump, but let's give it a shot. Um, so like Elon Musk, like the, the thing that kind of perturbs me is these really, really rich dudes can create this persona of this like, I'm the nicest person, I solve human crisis issues and things like that. They have the money to do it, but they don't. I've made this point before. The billionaires in the world could solve world hunger, the shelter thing, like give everyone shelter, running water, all that shit, and still remain billionaires. Mm -hmm. But they don't do it. And I call this asshole out on Twitter all the day in a quasi account. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. <laughs> but I call you all the time, fucker, stop pretending like you're helping people. Use your goddamn money to help people now. And he's like, if you give me your government money, I will certainly help people. And it's like, we, you have all the money you need. You don't need any more. Use your fucking che checking account or Swiss bank account or whatever else shit you got. We don't know. I'm not rich enough to know what other crap they have. Cayman Islands. I don't know. That's sad, huh? I feel bad for the Cayman Islands people. They're like, they're such sweet, normal people, but then all these rich douchebags leave all their money there, and now they're associated with rich douchebags. It's unfortunate. And if you ever go to like the Caribbean, the people are the sweetest people in the world. They're so nice. Um, and unfortunately, they become these cash and tax havens for rich douchebags. The moral of the story, rich douchebags. <laughs> no, I mean, like, here, here's my biggest beef with them. Sorry for all the Hindus out there. Biggest pork, no, wait. Biggest chicken, nobody is against chicken. Biggest chicken against them. Biggest chicken, we'll stick with chicken. So anyway, <laughs> my biggest chicken with the, the rich people is, I understand that it's a material thing to want them to kind of help others and make their lives better. But here's the thing, it's also good for them. Instead of becoming cockroaches next lifetime, they might move up to like piggies or something cuter. I don't know. I don't know how this shit works, but anyway, the point is we get recycled. Like when we're dead, like the energy goes somewhere, right? Scientific principle and religiously proven that we're not just gonna disappear, right? Like this energy right here. Let's look at the fire, everybody. Everybody take a look at the fire. That energy is neither being created nor destroyed, but it's making me warm, so. <laughs> I'll take in what I can. My material body needs it. It's freezing. Now I'm cold. All the energy, nervous energy is gone. Thanks for laughing, everybody. You're helping me calm down a bit. Woo. Oh yeah, and let's talk about, since we've been talking about origins and shit. So the reason, so obviously make that laugh. Goal one. Goal two is I actually care about giving joy to others. That's, that's the reason. So wife said joke machine or whatever, right? <laughs> the weirdest thing is you're basically talking to yourself. That's the hardest thing. It's like usually here. It's like I get inputs, right? If I'm talking, pl 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 please don't everybody start shouting. That'll confuse me. <laughs> Every now and then is okay. Like the Elon Musk that help. But I'm just saying, like you have to get used to talking to yourself. So I'll, I'm working on becoming a joke machine up here. But 
the original reason is to give joy. And now a lot of comedians are up here like, look at how amazing I am. I'm just incredible. So people automatically assume that when you tell them. I'm like, I do stand-up comedy. And they're like, oh, you need attention? <laughs> what the fuck is your problem? I didn't say that. You need attention. I mean, who doesn't mind attention, of course. But, but the point is I like giving joy. So like even when I'm gambling or hanging out with any, like some of the nicest people I've met, like Uber drivers, people I gamble with, like, oh my God, we will subscribe and like your channel and we'll watch everything. I'll give you a like on all my video, all your videos, all my videos. I don't know if that would help. But anyway, they did. All the people that I've met just randomly have been so nice through all this. And every now and then the guy who says you want attention though, oh, let's talk about that shit. That shit's fun. Uh, I just thought of it. <laughs> okay, so the people who think like attention and all that, um, I, generally speaking, want the best for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are, including Donald Trump. I still want him so good for him. He's a prick, but it's okay. We want good things for him too. But the point is, right, I generally want good and happiness and love and joy for everybody. And so uh, what happens is there's a certain type of person that's full of fear, full of fear, like fucking hates everything, suspicious of everything. They see me and hate me on sight. It happens all the fucking time. Um, so we're, we just flew back from Disney World and you know, we're all happy and giggly and like, hey, life, happy. Same thing happens to my sister too. <laughs> we're sitting on this plane and we're just having a good time. And my sister's, sister's an extrovert, I'm an introvert. Um, but when she's around people, she likes really talks a lot and has a good time. And the three of us are sitting there having a great time. And then this giant bald dude, who's clearly full of here, turns around and looks at all of us and goes, you guys need to keep it down. And like, I was like, are you trying to sleep? Like, why are we trying to keep it down, bro? Like, what's up? And he's like, it's loud. I'm like, we're on a plane. This is a fucking library. Like, what the fuck did you expect was gonna happen? Everyone's just gonna be like, this giant bald dude needs quiet. Shh. Like, he did that two or three times. And the last time he looks directly at my sister and goes, these three are, he looks at the flight attendant. He goes, these three are so loud, especially that one. And he points at my sister. And so my sister's a tough, tough dude. She's, she's tough. She will beat your ass. Like, she doesn't give a shit. She will fuck you up. And she's like this tall. She will fuck you up. You don't fuck with my sister. Anyway, so he does this whatever thing. And so my sister is kind of elevated in some spiritual respects. She just brushed him the fuck off. She didn't even react. And then the bald guy goes and sits down and she goes, she, so he goes, especially this one. And then my sister looks right at me and goes, especially this one. <laughs> She's awesome. Anyway, so that's my sister. We talked about people who hate me on site. Uh, oh yeah, I'll give you another one. This, this one was weird. It was weird too. Oh. Or was that just peace? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so um, what's it called? We're talking about, oh yeah, the people that hate me on site. So I don't even get mad anymore. It's kind of hilarious to me. I see them. I see the people I'm like, oh, he's gonna hate me. This is gonna be fun. Let's see what this one comes up with. Sorry, I was just like, I hope someone's not getting murdered. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, whew, that's some different kind of bedroom noises. <laughs> It sounded like someone was getting murdered. Okay, anyway, sorry, I got totally distracted. See, I care about everybody, even people screaming on the back. Um, so anyway, uh, this, this, which one was I talking about? Something about a bus? What the hell was I talking about? I didn't start? Fuck. People that hate you on site. People that hate me on site, but which one? Okay, it was gonna be fun. Oh, right, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, that was enough. I got this giant blank screen in here. So before we talk about the fun thing, let's talk about the blank screen. So, as you all know, I've talked about how I get nervous before all these performances and shit. I'm like, ah, performance, right? And that comes from the 12 year old being told he's ugly, right? I didn't even know I was on stage and she said I was ugly. So some of that comes from all that. But anyway, so the anxiety <laughs> leading up to this, you know, most people prep for their whatever, their gig, they're like writing stuff, notes and all this shit. My brain had three sets last night in my sleep. And at the end of every comedy set, I get arrested. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I was like, I was really hoping that like, maybe maybe it's like a, a what's it called? Like cathartic thing? No, all day my brain's like, okay, why don't you try this bit? Why don't you try this bit? Why don't you try that bit? 
It's kind of like the friend that's overly enthusiastic but doesn't understand the complexity of the issue in front of you. That's what my brain is like. I'm telling you, dude, oh my god, just do this. Here's the worst part. I can't even give you the example of what he was talking about. I have no idea. But it's rehearsed all day, last 36 hours. When I woke up this morning, I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna keep shutting it off. I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna be okay. I rehearsed so hard that someone had a full sentence go right over my head. They're like, did you take out the trash? And I was like, maybe I should talk about my sister. It <laughs> <laughs> just like, just totally different planet. Anyway, but, uh, uh, Ash, can I get one more? I enjoy those. Thank you. All right, so that's it for me. Thank you all for coming out and supporting us. Um, please check out my YouTube channel, Salar Talks, the Stand Up Comedy. Please subscribe, like, and share. I forgot that plug, please. <laughs> it gets us paid. And uh, on Instagram, Salar Kalita Comedy. Please follow me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.